here we are at Savan Lake and we're just gonna be exploring the areas around the lake and see what it has to offer since it's such a famous area in Armenia and here we're already at our first stop what's the name of this church hey Ravank hey Ravank and yeah so this is a 9th century church and it's just super picturesque and we came at the perfect time for golden hour we are at this hotel and Savan called Norvik's guest house and we just woke up to a beautiful spread of breakfast and just looks super delicious and the price of this hotel cost us 16,000 drum for two nights Right now we are at Savan church which is a church right in the center of the city and Really, there's not much history or something special about this church, but it sure is pretty. It has a beautiful orange color, so definitely worth checking out. Other than the church, inside the city savant, there's really not much, but here we have this genocide monument, which is another memorial for those who have fallen to the genocide. So worth a check out to pay the respects. When you're at the sites, you're gonna come across this handsome, handsome seagull right here. And he actually points out the points of interest in town, so. Now the main source of tourism obviously isn't the city, but more so the lake. It is a huge lake and right now we're really not in the greatest season for a lake because it is really, really cold. It's November, we're in November? No, October. We're in October. And yeah, this is not swimming weather, so. We are, we're at a nice beach area to go swimming, but right now it's just a nice view. We are at another touristy spot, which is Savan Island or Peninsula. Now it used to be an island because the water once upon a time was higher so it was separate from the mainland but it went down and then they saw that there was a road connecting both of them. We are at the Savans Riders House. It is a truly iconic shaped building in the region and it is a Soviet era construction created by two architects, Mikhail and Gregor. They initially created two buildings to act as a resort or a hotel of a sort for the region for artists and visitors. Um, they were later exiled before the construction was finished um, by Stalin and when they were released upon Stalin's death, they were able to continue the construction and they kind of made it with what was available at the time, even though it differed from what they originally started with. So you got this kind of contrast between modern and Soviet construction. And that's what we see here, this interesting avant-garde shape. Next, we are heading to another monastery called Savannah Vank. And to get here, you have quite the flight of steps to come up, but a plus side as you're exploring the island, you can notice there's a lot of little cute puppies around. So that's a plus. Bitch. Hey. We're at the top of the hill, looking down at both of the monasteries. And these are back way old from the 800s and just the scenery around it you're just surrounded by water and just super beautiful around here as you're going down the stairs you just get smacked with the sweet sweet smell and just smells so good and that is from the gata bakery and agata is a yeah. traditional baked good in armenia you have to try it first bite mm. still warm buttery sweet it's delicious oh, mm. and this is basically almost just bread with butter and sugar filling but I don't know how you can make something so simple, so delicious, and it just, 
inside really just melts in your mouth. Wow. As I was driving, I noticed this strange triangle shaped tower thing. So I decided to stop in, pull in, see what it's about. And it turns out it's this old Soviet watchtower, which you could climb up to and it's pretty steep. And you just get a whole view of the lake and the nice mountains. Something else to do that's not too touristy in Lake Savon is hike Mount. Um, I forgot the name of the mountain, so I'm gonna write it down here. But yeah, to go hiking, which is right up my alley. Made it all the way to the top and just gifted with some beautiful views all around me. Let's check this out. But I'm also surrounded by cow poop all around. Cow poop there, cow poop there, cow poop there, uh, cow poop, double cow poop. Hiking down the mountain now. And I just can't think of a better way to experience and to view Lake Savon than on top of a mountain during sunset. Super beautiful. And that's just about all I want to see around Lake Savon. And there's another place right next to it called Dilijan. Dilijan? And the Armenians tell me it's one of their favorite places. So you know, I just had to check it out. So see you there. Here we are in Dilijan at our next stop and we're at our monastery, another monastery, which Armenia has over 4,000 monasteries total, so get used to it if you come here. And now this monastery is called Gosh Shavank, which it's named after a scholar called Gosh, and this is from the 13th century. Dilijan is known as Little Switzerland of Armenia due to its mountainous landscape and due to its lush forest and all the greenery it has. But right now we came at a late season of late October, so it's pretty cold, so all the trees have shed its leaves, but still beautiful nonetheless. So we've made it to the Hagartsen complex. It's made up of three monasteries and no one can quite pinpoint when it was built, because of enemy raids and earthquakes, the churches that were in this area kept getting destroyed. But it has believed to be thriving since the 12th or 13th century. And it was a very important place for scientific learning, theology, and, and worship. So it's actually one of the bigger ones that we've seen so far. And I really like the color. It's really nice. Right by the monastery, there's actually a hidden waterfall trail. So we're gonna check that out and see what these waterfalls look like. We made it to the end of the waterfall trail. The whole trail is honestly super beautiful. A lot of rivers and many waterfalls. A little bit muddy, but the end here, we have this beautiful canyon of two waterfalls shooting into a hole. I bet in the summer, it's probably really nice to swim. We're now on another hiking trail to yet another monastery called Juktavant probably saying that's super wrong but yeah it's a really really old church I don't think it's active anymore but I could be wrong
Architecturally, these churches aren't really super impressive. But what sets them apart from the other churches we see is that these are just tucked away in the forest, surrounded by trees, and nobody around. So you really just have it all alone and it's super secluded. And these churches date back to the 11th century. The title of this church actually translates to Twin Churches, which explains why there's two of them. And now the insides of these are actually super dark. But this trail actually continues going and going, and it's called the Monastery Trail, where you come across more monasteries just like this. But we are not doing that today, so we have to keep it pushing. We spent the rest of the day exploring the city and enjoying some delicious food. And ended the night at the hostel, hanging out with some new friends and listening to music. It was absolutely beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for future videos. If you guys have any questions or recommendations or anything about Lake Savan or Dilijan, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear them. And until next time guys, stay up the beaten path.